Everyone has leaks, that's a fact. It's impossible to be perfect, and even the best players in the world will sometimes make mistakes. However, there are some mistakes that no player should ever make. With the abundance of information in the internet, like poker platforms offering preflop ranges for free, and YouTube channels teaching advanced concepts in 20 minutes, you're not allowed to make these mistakes. And yet, I think you probably are. In this video, I'll show you three major leaks that are embarrassing to have in your game. Let's go. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Saulo Costa and here I make poker strategies simple so that you can make more money. The first leak that you probably have and you should be ashamed of is overfolding the big blind. I gotta be honest here, this used to be a much bigger problem in the past. When I first started research population tendencies back in 2017, people were overfolding their big blind much more than what they do today. However, this still remains as a problem, particularly when people face small raise size like min raise from hijack or even min raise from the button. In these situations, people tend to overfold a lot relative to solver, and this is a major issue. When you're on the big blind, you're obligated to put money with any two cards. So if you want to maximize your chances of having a high positive win rate in poker, you must know how to play the big blind and you must defend your big blind like if it was the last thing you would do in your life. And yet, when it comes to calling with the proper hands against opens, people still have a lot of leaks. In my opinion, you should be ashamed of having this leak because nowadays there are platforms that offer free pre-flop ranges like GTA Wizard. The only thing standing between you and correct execution of your big blind pre-flop ranges is your laziness and lack of work ethic. There, I said it and I really mean it. Like, guys, come on. All you gotta do is look up the ranges, come up with a way to memorize them and apply them in game. Pre-flop is really, really important to dominate because guess what? It happens every single hand. Every single hand that you play, you're gonna have a pre-flop decision. So if you're constantly making mistakes pre-flop, you're not gonna have a high win rate. This is quite obvious, and again, the only thing standing between you and improving on this is yourself. There are tools out there, there are ways to improve on this, it's very quick, it's not very hard. All it takes is that you give it some effort, that you spend some time trying to improve on this. My recommendation for you to improve on your preflop ranges is drilling. GTO Wizard and many other platforms offer this opportunity for you very, very easily. You can just set up the spot that you want to drill, that you want to practice, and you can repeatedly get dealt hands so that you can practice and improve your execution. In my opinion, you should make this a priority if you do have leaks in this situation. And according to my research, it is very likely that you have this leak. So go ahead, set up some drills, and make that as a part of your study routine. Every day, separate a few minutes to practice your own ranges so that you don't make the mistake of overfolding your big blind ever again. Before we continue with the video, let me ask you something. Do you struggle with lack of direction, not knowing how to improve or how to find your leaks, or even with low self-confidence when a downswing hits you? If you answered yes to one or more of these questions, don't worry, you're not alone with this. These were the most voted struggles that people answered in a recent survey I made here with my subscribers in my channel. Without proper guidance and experience, it is in fact quite hard to know how to improve in poker or what you're doing wrong. On top of that, when you account for the abundance of tools and information out there, it does seem that it's very, very complicated to improve in poker. It's with these issues in mind that I decided to create the Poker Made Simple Week. In a period of seven days, I will host three different live streams here on YouTube, where I'll try to give you as much clarity as I possibly can about the foundations of the game. I want to teach you about the foundations of the game because I believe that with this knowledge, you will be much less likely to second guess yourself, not know where to go, and lack confidence when you start losing. You will understand what poker is all about, and you'll know exactly where your edge comes from. In fact, the very first class on the Poker Made Simple Week is going to be about how EV is generated. If you don't want to miss anything about the Poker Made Simple Week, and if you'd like to get notified about when we're live, then click the link in the description of this video and subscribe to the event. Oh, and one more thing. The live streams will not remain public in my channel. As soon as the event is over, I will make them private. However, I will send a link to all the people that subscribe to the event so that it can continue watching these classes even after everything is over. So go ahead, click the link in the description of the video, subscribe to the event, 
and we see each other on Thursday, 31st of August for our first class. This leads us to the second item in our list here of leaks that you have that you should be ashamed of. And the second item is overfolding to flop sea bets. Now, this leak is very similar to the first item in our list. Flopsy bets are very, very important, particularly the thing against flopsy bets is quite important because, again, you are playing out of the big blind. The big blind is a very important position for you to dominate and know how to play. You're risking compulsory money pre-flop, so you gotta know how you're going to defend the big blind. You gotta make sure that you're extracting as much EV as you possibly can from every single hand that you're dealt because otherwise you're just literally throwing money, you're giving money to other people. So you need to get better at your big blind play. And out of the big blind, most of the decisions you're gonna face post-flop are gonna be facing flop C bets. You're gonna check your entire range to the pre-flop aggressor in no sport textures, and then 70-75% of the time, you're going to be facing a C bet. You need to know how to defend against a flop C bet. And again, there is no excuse for having a leak in this. You have the tools out there. You have a good report on GTU Wizard. You have the drilling function where you can drill and practice against any flop size that you have troubles with. So again, the only one standing between you and correct execution here is yourself. It's not hard to do this. It's absolutely not hard. It's actually just very straightforward. You just gotta practice a little bit so that you internalize the heuristics and the thresholds for which types of hands you need to defend in certain boards and which types of hands you can fold. It's probably one of the easiest things that are possible to learn in poker. It doesn't get much easier than that. The only things that are easier than that are the preflop ranges, but already covered preflop ranges in the first item. So the next easiest thing you have to fix in your game is defending against flop C bets. According to my research, people have also gotten much better at this compared to five, four years ago. But still, this remains a leak, particularly when you are in position in the big blind facing a small blind C bet. In that spot, regulars can have up to 9% overfold relative to solver. This means that every time someone C bets against you, you're leaving money at the table by not calling with as many as 9% of hands in your range. I think this is an embarrassing leak to have because, particularly when you are in position in that spot, you're playing against a very wide range from someone who's likely over C betting that spot, and he's usually gonna be betting with a small size. So all you gotta do is float a small bet from someone with a super wide range in a spot where he's likely over C betting. So come on guys, put in the call. Let's play the game, let's play the turn, let's play some rivers. You can't just be over folding all the time. You gotta fight harder for pots. You gotta understand what are the thresholds for continuing within the hands in your range. And notice how I said that the small blind is likely over C betting, which means that having the leak to overfold is a major problem because you're getting naturally exploited. People are playing on average in a way that is exploiting your tendency to overfold. They're C betting more hands than they should, and they're not doing this intentionally. Some people might, but most people are not doing this intentionally. But they are see betting more hands than they should, and you are folding more hands than you should. Therefore, you're getting exploited naturally. The small blind guy doesn't have to do anything to extract money out of you because you're just playing a way that gets exploited. So my advice for you, again, is set up the drills. Separate at least some portion of your day to devote to drilling, to practicing. I don't get why people have such a hard on for reviewing hands. I'm gonna make a specific video about this, but reviewing hands? Jesus, there are so many more things that are more useful use of your time than reviewing hands. Reviewing hands is not an effective way to improve. And I can already hear the voices. Whoa, reviewing hands is not a decent way to improve? How come we can say this? Everyone reviews hands. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about this in a future video. But reviewing hands is not an effective way of improving, particularly not the way that most people do when they review hands. So you gotta at least reserve some period of studying towards drilling. Every single industry that involves a lot of competition, where there are multiple people trying to fight against each other for some prize or for some tournament or whatever, there is a lot of drilling in their improvement process. There is a lot of practicing. And yet in poker, people still have this resistance. This, this was much worse back in the day because there were no tools available for us to effectively practice the spots that we are dealt in game. But nowadays, there's no excuse anymore. You have those tools available. All you gotta do is have a schedule, separate some time in a day for you to drill, to practice, and guess what? In a few weeks, you have a much better execution than you currently have in your games. So the second leak 
please fix that as soon as possible. It is costing you money and it's easy as hell to fix this problem. Now, the third and final leak we're gonna cover in this video that you should be ashamed of having is not randomizing. Now, this is a more general leak. It's not necessarily about a certain specific spot of the game tree, but it's about your approach as a poker player. A lot of people, particularly at low and mid stakes, have this approach in poker where they don't randomize their hands. They essentially play in a binary way. They have a decision in a post-flop spot. They will choose a strategic option, let's say bat or check, and they will play that option 100% of the time. They're not using a randomizer, so they pick an option and they play that option 100% of the time. Now, guess what? This is one of the major sources of the problems we have said in the prior items in our list. So the problem of overfolding the big blind, the problem of overfolding as flopsy bets, a lot of it comes from the fact that you're overfolding the mixed strategy region. You're overfolding the threshold hands. You get dealt a hand, you are put in a difficult decision pre-flop or on the flop with a hand that you feel is like very close or maybe it's very marginal. And what do you do? You just fold it. Your immediate reaction is to take the most comfortable action, which is just letting it go. And you have an intuitive sense that that hand is not worth much money, so you go ahead and you just fold. So your intuition is correct, however, to play optimal poker, you need to call with those marginal hands at least sometimes in a lot of situations. Otherwise, you make yourself exploitable. So the fact that you don't randomize makes yourself exploitable in all of those areas of the game tree where you're required to continue with at least some portion of your marginal hands. Since you're playing a binary way, you're always going to be defaulting towards just the most passive action, which is to fold. Now, you might have heard from a lot of people on the internet or in forums and whatever, that you don't need to randomize to be poker, particularly the lowest stakes. And although that is correct, you absolutely do not need randomization to beat poker, at least not the lowest stakes. It doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't use it. There are many things that are not strictly necessary for you to win, but that still would be a good idea that you have them or that you use them. You don't need a big widescreen monitor to play online poker. It's not necessary to win. You don't need to study poker theory in depth with solvers. It's not strictly necessary to win and be profitable. And also, you don't need a $3,000 chair to play poker professionally. It's not necessary to make money. However, I would not be making a bold claim here to say that you are better off with all of those things. You are better off having a very sick, good, big monitor. You are better off studying poker theory in depth, and you are better off having a sick, comfortable chair that you're gonna be able to use for many, many years. So something not being necessary is not sufficient reason for you not to use it, not to do it, not to have it. Randomization is a tool. It is a tool that has many benefits. The most obvious and most important benefit of randomization is the fact that you make your strategy less exploitable. It's impossible to play a low exploitability strategy if you just play in a binary way in which every single hand in your range you play 100% of the time in a given strategic option. A not very obvious but also very important benefit of randomization is that you reduce decision fatigue. It's much easier to let the role decide whatever you have to do with your hand than thinking through all the data points in the hand to figure out exactly what is the highest of the option with a given hand. Randomization allows you to let the dice decide. And that can be a great thing in a lot of situations because guess what? There are many situations in poker where the V of different options is really, really close. So you don't have to spend a lot of energy trying to figure out exactly what you need to do. You know that it's really close to begin with, so you roll the RNG and you execute according to the numbers you see on your screen. There are many benefits for using randomization. And again, the fact that it's not absolutely required to be a profitable player does not mean you should not use it in your game. Using your RNG is also quite easy. It's very simple to understand the logic behind it. If you have watched my videos here on YouTube, you will see that I constantly use RNG whenever I see appropriate, and you can replicate the strategy I use in your own game. All you gotta do is watch a couple videos here and you'll see exactly how it works. Now, there is an observation I have to make here and this is important. Overusing RNG can in fact be a problem. I have observed this over the years, particularly with my students that are more theory oriented. And when a student, when a player in particular, starts using RNG too much, 
they become a little bit too passive. That's generally the tendency that I observe with people that are way too theory oriented. And I believe there are multiple reasons for this, but the point of the video is that yes, there is a problem with overusing RNG. So I don't want you to get out of this video and start randomizing against recreational players on the river. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is that you should use RNG whenever it is appropriate, whenever it makes sense for you to use it. So don't overuse it. It is going to be a problem if you rely on it too much, but of course, develop the habit of having this as a tool in your arsenal. It's not gonna hurt you. It's actually only going to benefit you. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy this video, I would imagine you're going to enjoy this one I separated for you right here. See you there.